Since iPad OS 18 has been released, I wanted to check back up on external monitor support for the iPad. I'm really find out if it's a genuine replacement for Mac and if it's even ready to be used in a desk setup scenario. I've been living with it for about a week now and I've been testing things like app compatibilities, scaling issues, looking out for bugs, testing gaming and performance in general, and there's been loads of takeaways, so let's get straight into it. Let's talk about this desk setup first i using the ipad pro 12.9 inch with entry chip and that's sitting in the s stand from ergo that's connected with the super fast usb-c cable to my asus monitor and on the side of this tough gaming monitor i've got a dangle sticking out of it which takes all sorts of memory cards and other things i need to put in for a keyboard, I using my minimal Red Dragon Fizz which I really like and I'm using a T-Dagger rather than a mouse for the setup as well. For all of this to work, you need to have an overhead iPad, so any of the M-Series and you also need to have a keyboard attached and a mouse or a trackpad. Or you can just use Apple Magic Keyboard and plug it into your monitor directly and that will work too. That's the setup I'm using and of course I'd be so happy if you watch the video till the end, like and subscribe. Okay let's talk about the good news stuff friends because there is some really good stuff here and I don't want to this video be overly negative so let's jump into that. First up, external camera is here and it's fully fledged. You can now plug in a webcam or you can even plug in a mirrorless camera like this one and use it as your webcam or use it as any sort of capture device. This is great because the iPad camera position is just horrendous and especially when you have it in a desk setup scenario, it can be even worse. So getting this is just fantastic and plus you can also use your iPhone for your extra camera as webcam with this application or any similar ones and it works really well in apps like facetime google meet and even better in google meet because you can also choose which camera or microphone you wanna use this isn't in every app yet so in zoom which is one of the big ones you can't actually use this yet which is a shame secondly this is another huge feature is you can now move windows where you like on the external display which is awesome and this is something which we were all kind of begging for and now that's here and it feels fantastic you can move windows around wherever you like on the screen and it's a very similar experience to mac or windows even though it does feel a little bit slower it's also now way more stable than it was before i'm not getting any strange app crashes and i'm not getting any kind of red dress to the home screen which is just great. There are some very occasionally which we talk about a bit later. This is a much more stable platform and talking of the apps generally feel a lot better than here too. And of course we are getting to more pro-level iPad apps too. Logic Pro and Final Cut here finally on the iPad. And even though they don't fill the entire screen yet, which is annoying. The fact that they are here just means that the iPad is a more viable desktop solution. It's just fantastic to see those apps. So while that tells up kind of new things, I still read it that good things of this are still fantastic. An example of that would be that some apps on iPad are kind of better than browser. So Twitter and Instagram, for example, you can use the full app on a big screen, which is really nice rather than the browser experience. And some apps which do go full screen are really convincing. Lightroom is a really good example of that. Where I edit all of my photos, that feels through desktop app. And LumaFusion, which is really decent video editor, feels completely convincing as an app and you can let the hours drift by while you are using it. And you completely forget you are using an iPad, which is absolutely the experience it should be delivering, and it does. Or some games even fully supporting keyboard and mouse or controller input. For example, you can play Minecraft on here and using the keyboard and mouse or trackpad input was really really good. Feel like I was playing on a normal PC despite not being full screen. And not mention having second screen as an iPad is legitimately a cool experience. You still get access to all of your apps on that screen because it remains active and then you get to interact with it exactly the same way as you would as if you were just using an iPad 
which is just great. So if you need to take notes or if you need to do anything on touch bases, you can bunch them and do that like normal, which is so so cool. I'm not to mention I really like the innocent experience of the entire thing. This is a one cable solution, so plug in the iPad and you immediately have this desk setup scenario. And then when you plug it out, you have a normal iPad again. And finally on the good things, performance is still fantastic. I'm obviously using the M1 and M2 version here, which is like beefed up with RAM and has the best processor, but even on the M1 version, I've tried out this. The performance and experience hold up, I never feel like waiting for anything. And everything is nice and snappy. All at once that translates to gaming to I tried out a huge amount of Call of Duty Warzone. And even on the higher graphics setting, it ran very well. It was the same for Minecraft and a bunch of Genshin Impact as well. The iPad really does handle this well when it's powering its own screen at the same time. While I've been using it, I kept note a bunch of small tips, which have sped up my use. The first of those, if you hold down shift while you click on an app, it will open up in your current space, not jump you into a new one. Also rather than going to the dock to find apps. If you press command and spacebar and open the spotlight and type it in, that's a much quicker way of getting into the apps and it saves hunting ground to find them which has been really useful. But my recommendation is to use a trackpad in a setup mouse if possible. It offers a much smoother experience, integrates better with the system and gives you a great sense of comfort and the speed while using it. By the way, you can change the setting of your mouse that is kind of sticky, which you see in this screen. And finally, the best placement of your iPad is absolutely under the display. I've tried having this on the left or on the right and it just doesn't feel right. And there is even an option which you can have it on top of your external display. And I really don't know who that's for. But Apple clearly intended this is be under the display, which I have no space for right now and I have to use it on the left side. Okay, let's talk about the bigger issues here because there is still plenty to tackle. And the first up, it still does have bugs. And the biggest one that I came across was I've tried not being able to open the apps from the dock. This was really strange. It didn't happen too often, but usually I just drag an app up from the dock to open it and it outright doesn't work and I click the app doesn't matter what I do, just won't load up, which is really strange. There are still scaling issues as well with some apps and I think this could be on developers or Apple. But I'm not always sure that some apps outright doesn't scale well. And when you try and move them around, it's just a complete mess. And the top right menu bar on the normal OS, if you click on that, on the external display, it opens up in the iPad, which is just weird. You expected it open on the external display and it doesn't. And the final things which always really annoyed me was the fact there is no direct sound control at all. So you can't pick the sounds were gonna come at all it's going to come out of the iPad speakers or your external monitor or your iPod speakers or anything is like that is just the site for you, which is very frustrating. And one of the most annoying thing in this setup is you can't use your external display when your iPad is off. And as you see, when you power off your iPad, you can't do anything with your external display. And I don't know what it should be like that. And the iPad seems to get a lot warmer now than it ever did before as well. And that could be an entry thing, I'm not really sure, but it's not really too much and something you worry about. So yeah, those are a bunch of annoying little things which I propped up while I using it. So the big question of course is the iPad could be really a Mac replacement and can it function as a desktop computer? And I kind of want to say no to that, but I also want to mention that iPad is not really built for this. It's adapting to it. And the fact that you haven't got external monitor support all is kind of awesome. You know, we all picked up an iPad based on what it could do before it could do any of this. So getting all of them in a software update is pretty awesome, even though it doesn't work across all of the iPads. The fact that it works on any kind of iPad is really cool. I'm not trying to defend Apple at all. They should be held to the highest kind of standard. But the fact that this was never promised and then it suddenly came out of nowhere is a really cool feature and we kind of got to remember that. 
I really don't think Apple trying to convince us to switch from a Mac to an iPad. The iPad is basically an adaptive computer which can do a bunch of stuff and it works really good for some people and you prefer to using a Mac and have a Mac experience like I do for pretty much everything then switching to iPad doesn't make sense. For me, the iPad is a still wonderful combination to Mac and something incredibly well and it does other things not so well. So that just about rounds up the video, I hope you enjoy it. If you are using your iPad with an external display, I would love to know what you are using it for and why, so let me know in the comments below. I always love to hear that you have to say. And as ever, see you in next episodes.